So I think all of you are familiar with tsunamis. If you're not, uh, I guess type tsunami on YouTube and you'll get lots of footage. But the tsunamis we usually hear about are normally caused by earthquakes or in some minor cases like in Tonga by volcanoes. However, when it comes to some of the largest tsunamis ever discovered anywhere on the planet, they're usually actually caused by something entirely different. Most of these super large tsunamis, hundreds of meters in height, were actually caused by a landslide. Ok, maybe not this kind of a landslide. This is just the footage I could find online. Here we're talking about something very similar but on a much more dramatic scale. Something that involves a really large displacement of Earth that then ends up in a large body of water generating an enormous wave. And though technically this can be actually caused by a lot of other things, including for example really large asteroids hitting the planet, which might have actually happened during the time of dinosaur demise 66 million years ago, or even more intriguingly, there might have been actually an impact 2.5 million years ago that eventually caused the ice ages on planet Earth. This is actually something we're going to be discussing really soon in the video coming out next week. But in a nutshell, Compared to a typical tsunami, these so-called mega tsunamis are a lot more dramatic, way more unpredictable and usually happen in just minutes without much fanfare or even announcements. And so in this video I actually wanted to discuss mega tsunamis, but to be more specific, one that happened in 2023 or technically last year from when I'm making this video that was almost completely missed by everyone. And it was actually huge, approximately 200 meters in height and only discovered for one reason. Here there was actually a very small military base that at that point was vacated because of bad weather, but weeks later various images posted online revealed that Ella Zero, as this arctic station is known, seemed to be sort of destroyed. All of the heavy equipment was all over the place and a lot of it ended up in the water. But because there were a lot of signs of very large wave around this location, it was pretty clear what happened here. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. And so let's discuss what happened here, what we actually know about this event and the recent paper that just came out that discovered that apparently after this tsunami, the water in this fjord was actually still moving around and sloshing around for at least one week. And that's basically how powerful this event was. But because most of these events happen in very remote locations, usually in mountainous areas somewhere in Alaska, Greenland, Canada or Norway, we don't actually hear much about them despite the tremendous sizes of some of these waves. And I think the most famous example here is actually from Alaska from 1958. This is the so-called 1958 Lituya Bay mega tsunami that was caused by the piece of the mountain right there that suddenly entered water in mere seconds. And during this event, this entire bay was basically covered by a wave approximately 520 meters in size. So here is a picture just to help you visualize. And we know that this wave happened and was basically this high because there were also eyewitnesses. There's actually one case of a father and a son that were fishing at that time and they managed to survive this. Now you can read about this in one of the links in the description, but in essence, we know that in the last few decades a few of these events happened, but we only found out about them based on the signs of destruction, with these waves being extremely destructive as well. And that's really because of what you're about to see right here. They happen really quickly and essentially result from an enormous displacement of water all at once. Something that washes away everything on the way. But in most cases they're usually natural. There is however one case, the case known as the Vajont Dam disaster, that despite being caused by a landslide as well, was entirely man-made in nature. This was essentially very poor engineering in Italy that resulted in a major disaster and a huge wave that killed almost 3000 people. We'll talk about this some other day, but the link for this is also in the description. But interestingly enough, in the last few decades, the frequencies of mega tsunamis actually kind of increased, mostly in the regions with permafrost and inside various ice fjords. And so as a result, in the last two decades, we've already discovered quite a few, way more than ever before. For example, in 2000 and 2017, we had really powerful ones in Greenland. I'm actually posting a link for the 2017 event because it was technically captured on camera as it basically washed away one of the smaller villages somewhere in Greenland. Then there was another one in 2015 in Alaska and now in 2023 once again Greenland, with all four of these generating enormous waves. But strangely enough this one, the Dixon Fjord tsunami, was possibly one of the largest ones again. Here the tsunami exceeded 200 meters or 660 feet. Luckily as I mentioned, there was no one to witness this, 
and thus no casualties. But turns out that this was technically witnessed by a lot of seismologists that heard all of this from a lot of different seismic stations around the planet, which essentially turned this into a seismological study. And that's because a lot of this newly analyzed data revealed something super unusual. Here this was so powerful that the signals from this traveled for over 5000 kilometers and were still audible even a week after, which was a little bit strange. These seismic monitors revealed that this bizarre event generated what's known as a saish, or basically a kind of a standing wave inside the water of this fjord. And so here the water was oscillating for basically a week afterwards, creating a very specific frequency referred to as the very long period seismic signal, or VLP seismic signal. And it's really this unusual VLP, and so this VLP suggests that there was a lot of sloshing in the water even after tsunami passed. But in this case, the seismic monitors basically displayed the entire event, starting from the high energy landslide, followed by the mega tsunami, and then the VLP, with that wave formed somewhere inside here. But by comparing this to previous VLPs, they realized they've actually seen this previously many, many times. These seismic signals have been detected before, although usually in late summer, which basically suggests that a lot of this is usually either the result of various icebergs collapsing, or like in this case, very powerful landslides that seem to be the result of the permafrost melting over time. And as I mentioned before, because we seem to be seeing more and more of these events, here this is where you get that pitch about the global warming. But this is not a climate video, it's a mega tsunami video. So yeah, moving on. But more importantly, it wasn't just like one or two events, they potentially discovered thousands of these events in just the last few years. Now naturally not all of them were probably caused by mega tsunamis, but a lot of them seem to be caused by either landslides or the collapse of various glaciers, which often do produce waves and in many cases do produce these seishes or standing waves. And even that 2017 event that caused the mega tsunami seemed to have produced similar signals, but in this case only lasting for about one hour. So basically these lone oscillations or these VLPs seem to be a kind of a trademark for a lot of mega tsunamis produced through landslides or possibly iceberg collapses. But how long this lasts and obviously how powerful this event becomes usually depends on the landslide and most importantly on the shape of the fjord. In this case Dixon fjord seemed to be just the right shape to create a wave that lasted for one week. Here the fjord was very narrow and the wave itself was just the right amplitude that essentially made the water slosh over and over and over again until it finally settled after a week. In more scientific terms, the researchers refer to this VLP as a monochromatic oscillation. But naturally, when it comes to I guess most of us, right now this is more of a curiosity and not really a concern because I don't think most of us live near fjords or in locations where landslides or obviously mega tsunamis are even possible. Nevertheless, studies like this are important for much smaller communities because by using this sensing technology, we might be able to monitor a lot of remote locations in Greenland and thus discover various patterns predicting these events, predicting these events before they actually happen. Or at the least be able to detect them by listening to these seismic waves and then assessing the aftermath. But I mean just the fact that there was this mega tsunami less than one year ago from when I make in this video, to me at least is kind of mind blowing. But as I mentioned before, because of the melting permafrost and because a lot of these glaciers are slowly retreating, most of the ground here is slowly becoming more unstable so chances for even more of these landslides and thus mega tsunamis is only going to increase in time, which means that we might be talking about another one in less than two years, I guess statistically speaking. But we'll talk about an even more exciting event that potentially caused the ice ages in that video coming out really soon, so subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.